confession tonight, we pray that, Lord, you would come again. Pay us a visit again. Lord, we want to worship you this evening. We praise you. We glorify you and we honor you. Lord, we thank you because of the confession of our lips. Lord, in quietness and in confidence shall be our strength. Lord, we are praying that, Father, you would visit us in quietness and in confidence. Lord, we have confessed that we want to reduce within ourselves that you may increase within us. Father, we are falling at your feet desperately in the spiritual realms and father surrendering all to you the king of kings and lord of lords have your way my father have your way in our lives align us to your will take your place as king my father melt every darkness lord that may be in us lord jesus pay us a visit tonight we worship you we enthrone you in our midst and we ask you, Lord, to pour out your Holy Spirit and reign in this place, reign in every single one of our hearts, my Father. Reign in us. Let it be that today we will go home different because, Father, you have paid us a visit. We love you, Lord. Speak to us. Minister to us, Lord. Even as we are preparing to just hear the word that you have prepared for us we are just praying that lord you prepare each one's heart lord to hear from you to listen to you to connect with you and father we are praying that you minister to every single one of us individually lord meeting us us at our points of need we pray all this in jesus name amen Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise him again. Yeah, um, I'd like to welcome you again for today's Ignite service. And today we just want to... I just want to speak on a topic here to do with growing in our character and growing in worship. Praise God. Yes, God is good and he wants us to grow even as we worship him. So I just want to speak a little bit just briefly concerning worship. Worship is an act of devotion directed towards God. Worship is not an emotion, but rather more of a recognition of God. When we are able to recognize God and acknowledge him, that in itself is worship. In Christianity, worship is the act of attributing reverent honor and homage to God. I just want to draw us to a scripture that I felt touched me so much concerning worship and that Psalms chapter 96 and verse 7 to 13. I'll read it for you. This is what it says. All nations of the world recognize the Lord. Recognize that the Lord is glorious and strong. Give to the Lord the glory he deserves. Bring your offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in all his holy splendor. Let all the earth tremble before him. Tell all the nations the Lord reigns. The world stands firm and cannot be shaken. He will judge all peoples fairly. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and everything in it shout his praise. Let the fields and their crops burst out with joy. Let the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, before the Lord, for he is coming. Amen. He is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with justice and nations 
with his truth. So this scripture is just speaking a lot of what worship is all about. Worship is not that time when you sing the, so, the slow song and maybe you put on a serious face and you lift your hands and you look up, which is just probably for a few minutes, maybe once a week when you come to church or twice a week if you come for the evening prayers. That's not the worship I want to talk about because worship is not about singing those slow songs when in service it's something very tangible it ref and it's something that should actually reflect in our lives I'll tell you the Webster's definition for worship and um, this is how Webster's dictionary puts it it says worship is honor with extravagant love and extreme submission so for us to grow in worship and in our character it's actually about a choice it's a choice we have to make growing in our character through worship begins with you it begins with me it's a choice that you make that is where you begin from and this worship is actually defined by the priority we place on who God is in our lives and where God, God is on our list of priorities. Because if God is number one on your list of priority, then that is worship. It means he will be seen in every single area of your life. When worship is your lifestyle as a behavior, Christ should be reflected in all aspects of your life. And just like I said earlier, worship is not about an emotion. It is something tangible. Worship is something when, when you are living a life worshiping God, even the non-Christians around you can feel something. It's something that is so tangible that even someone who is not a Christian will be able to discern that there, there is actually a special spirit that is indwelling in you. So worship, when we desire to live this kind of lives, it will be reflected in our character. If this is true worship. That is something that comes out so naturally in our character. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 31 says, So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. It means even when you go into a, a restaurant, because it says whether you eat or drink, you will be thinking of God. And saying, Lord, I just want to glorify you, even as I am seated in this restaurant with no one worshiping me, with, with no one watching me, sorry. Lord, I just want you to be reflected in my life. I want you to be glorified. Worship is a choice, as I said, and you're the one to decide. The choice is yours. It's not. Um, something you do only when someone is watching you or someone is assessing you or someone needs to give a recommendation about you. When we offer God true worship, we are actually inviting him to inspect our hearts for anything that is contrary to him. So that is something we should know when we are desiring to offer God true worship. And we start worshiping him. We have that desire and we make that choice. Lord, I want you to be glorified in every area of my life. Automatically, you invite him to inspect your heart. And there's nothing as good as God coming to inspect your heart because you want your heart to be right. He will work on our character. When he inspects our heart, he's not inspecting our heart so that he can judge us. No. 
he works on our character. There's a promise in the scripture that I read earlier, Psalms chapter 96. If we may look at verse 8 to 9, it's the promise that is in worship. That we will be transformed into the likeness of God. So Psalms chapter 96 verse 8 to 9, I want to read it again. Give to the Lord the glory he deserves. Bring your offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in all his splendor. Let all the earth tremble before him. So worship, as I said, when it's a lifetime, when it's your lifestyle, it means that in every area of your life, there will be no area that is exempt from God's glory. I want you to just think about it this way. Think of your family life. When you're with your family, you're with your siblings and you're with your parents and if you're married, you're with your spouse or you're with your children, do they see Christ in you? If they are able to confess from their hearts, even if they don't confess, but they are able to acknowledge, in, acknowledge it in their hearts that they see Christ in you, that's a sure way of knowing that you're moving in the right direction. And we are here to encourage one another to grow in our life of worship. It simply means you surrender to God. Think of your workplace. You're probably seated over here, but if people would go to your workplace, they would actually be surprised that you are a Christian. What I usually say, um, no one is telling you to go on the rooftop and announce, I am a Christian, I am born again. That is something that if it is in you, in fact, if you have not yet confessed it, it's people who will ask you, are you born again? Think of your colleagues wherever you work. If, do, do they see... Christ in you. It's a great achievement where, when even the people who are not confessing Christ, um, Christ as their Lord and Savior can say, that person, that, that young man or that young lady is born again. So that is what a life of worship is all about. When we choose that in every area God is going to be glorified. When you are with friends, are they able to tell there is a different spirit at work in this young man or this young woman in the market? And for worship to be reflected in our character, it means that we are God conscious in whatever we do or we say or we think. Basically, every aspect of our lives, in the little things and in the big things, we should remain God conscious when no one is watching and when everyone is watching. It should be the same. Worship is honoring with extravagant love and extreme submission. You offer God, you give God extravagant love. You just want to love him and extremely submit yourself to him. And because God is spirit, the only way we can worship him is through our character, our day-to-day -day character. They say action speaks louder than word. Doesn't make sense if you keep confessing Christ as your Lord and Savior and it's not seen in your character. You, you won't have an impact. In fact, if anything, you might work contrary for the kingdom of God. You, you may bring losses to the kingdom of God. Let's just look at some three characters in the Bible because there are many characters in the Bible who worshipped God as their lifestyle. And the first one is David. Think about David. David was always worshipping God with psalms, hymns, and musical instruments. He understood the mystery behind worship. He made worship a way of life. You know, if you've, if you've read the psalms, David was always, always, always worshipping. We have a Sunday school lesson that is titled David prays all the time because David was known to be someone who communed with God 
all the time. Despite, despite all his flaws, David tried to honor God in his life. He tried to live a lifestyle that honored God. He had his flaws. But even when he faltered, he still ran to God for help because he never wanted to lose that communion with God. And someone else is Joseph. In some places, he's called beautiful Joseph. Joseph was, um, he had various characters in him, so many characters um, in, in him that he had that show that he worshipped God. Joseph was obedient. You know, when you are obedient, that is, you are showing God love because God wants us to be obedient. He was obedient. No wonder his father could trust him on an errand when he went to check on his brothers. Joseph was hardworking. We see it when he worked in Potiphar's house. Joseph was also honest. He lived a, a life of worship and reverence to God. And we can see that because of this, he was, he, his character grew because of his lifestyle of worship. And when we say he was honest, we see this also in when he was working in Potiphar's house and even in the prison when he and, and also when he governed Egypt. We see honesty. He was honest in Potiphar's house. He, he was honest in the prison. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been chosen to be above the, the prisoners. He was honest when he was governing Egypt. It was actually a corrupt, free country. It was evident in Joseph's life that he had this extreme love for God and, um, and this... Um, submission, extreme submission as well. And his giftings were developed through his lifestyle of worship. And so can your giftings be developed. When you choose, as I said earlier, it all has to do with a choice. When you choose, your gifts can also be, um, God can also bring up your gifts and your gifts can be developed just by your decision to live a lifestyle of worship. And one thing that should be very evident in the lifestyle of worship is integrity. Integrity is simply doing the right thing no matter who is watching or who is not watching, who is there with you in, or who is not there with you. Integrity sim simply means even when you are on a matatu in another town, no, no, there is no, there's probably no chance of anyone knowing you're a Christian, but you have not paid your fare. Do you have integrity enough to tell the conductor, I have not paid my fare? So despite what Joseph went through, Joseph's actions showed that he was confident in God. And throughout Joseph's life, he feared God all the time. He resisted Potiphar's wife's advances. We see it in Genesis chapter 39. Joseph knew pretty well that God was watching and he, Joseph, chose to demonstrate extravagant love for God and extreme submission. Genesis chapter 39 verse 9 says, how then could I do such an immoral thing and sin against God? It wasn't even about Potiphar. Him saying no, it wasn't about Potiphar bottom line was it was all about God and lastly it's Jesus knew Jesus knew the extent to which um, Jesus knew the extent to which God adores and loves to be worshipped Jesus did worship God Jesus wasn't really found singing songs and hymns and psalms like David but we know the life of Jesus and it's found in the gospel in all the gospels and that is a life um, of worshipping God. So in conclusion, I just want to remind you that it's a choice. It's just a choice you need to make. And if you mean it from your heart, God is going to work in you and you are going to live a lifestyle that um, is worship to God and that way you are going to grow. You automatically are going to grow in your character. And so, I just want to make a call. You're probably seated there and you're thinking, I think I need to grow in my character. I need to live a life that worships God.
But then the truth is, if you don't have Jesus in your heart as your Lord and Savior, you can't do this. You don't have the ability to do it because it's not something we can do um, on our own. We need Jesus to do it. And so I'm just um, calling out to you if you would like to receive Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. You can just show me by um, lifting your hands up. And after this, we will pray with you and just lead you and guide you on how to have a personal walk and relationship with Jesus. So you can just raise your hand if you're yet to make this decision in your life. I'm glad that we are all born again, but I also just want to remind you that you're welcome. If you didn't raise your hand, you can still talk to me after this service. And I want to encourage each one of us here, let's make that choice tonight to live a lifestyle, a lifestyle of worship to God so that our character can grow. God can help us and grow our character and we will live a life that's pleasing to him and so I'll just ask us to stand up and I give a closing prayer our father and our savior in the name of Jesus Christ we want to continue worshiping you Lord this evening and we want to thank you for your word Thank you, Lord, for giving us your word. Father, I want to just commit every single person, Lord, who is seated over here and even those who are watching online. I pray that, Lord, you would cause your Holy Spirit to move in them and that they would boldly make this decision, Lord, to live a life of worship. And I pray that, Father, every single person who makes this decision, that you may grow them in character, Lord. Father, we just want to repent for we are sinners. Lord, where we have wronged you in thought, in word, and in deed, we repent. We ask you to forgive us. And we ask you, Lord, to just inhabit our hearts. And Father, lead us and guide us and just give us direction. Show us, my Father, how we can live a lifestyle that is worship to you. Father, we are praying and asking that, Lord, you would grow our characters and you would develop the gifts, our divine gifts that you gave us. We thank you, Lord, for you are good, you are holy, and you are faithful, and you have done it. We pray all this, believing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all so much.